Welcome to the second Ski Classics live sessions in front of the La Venosta weekend. There are two thrilling races ahead of us, La Venosta Criterium on Saturday and, of course, individual time trial on Sunday. But today we are going to meet some of the stars of Ski Classics and talk to them about the upcoming weekend. And if any media people watching this session want to ask questions, please raise your hand anytime during these interviews. I'm your host, Teemu Virtanen, and I will also be commentating this weekend's events for Ski Classics Play. But without further ado, let's meet our first guest, Thomas Kranlund, the event director of Ski Classics. Uh, welcome, Thomas, and good, good to have you here. How are you doing? Thank you, Timo. It's very nice to be here. I'm fine up in uh, Venosta, no, Melago Alm. Uh, we have uh, snow outside and um, a lot of snow in the uh, course, so it looks very good, everything for the race. And I will start speaking a little about the, the, the course for Saturday. We start start with the Davenosta Criterium. Uh, we have the start in Melago, and we do a shorter loop this year before we come to the sprint after 4.5 kilometers. And then we go again a loop, and we go a loop, and then after 21 kilometers, we have a climb. And then we do the next loop and we have a Milago Alm. Uh, that's the course for Saturday. And the, the course looks really good. We have a lot of snow this year, so no problem with that. And uh, we'll look, yeah, it's look good. Any questions about the Saturday's loop what's, or race? Uh, what's the, uh, you mentioned a lot of snow there, but the what, what about the temperature? It's usually quite cold there. Yeah, at the moment it's like around minus one up here, and it will be uh, <coughs> almost the same tomorrow and on Friday. Then on Saturday morning it will it will be around minus eleven, minus thirteen in the morning. So we will have really winter conditions up here on Saturday, and the sun will also be shining as it looks like now. Good, and we have questions. Anders Blomqvist, there, please go ahead. Hey Thomas, is it, this, is it the same course as last year? No, uh, it's a little shortened. As you see, uh, we start and we go the, up to the climb and then go down, and then we do a shorter first loop to the sprint. Okay. That's that's, it, that's, it, it, that's the only thing that's that changed from last year. Yeah, thank you. And I think we have another question there as as well from Jakob Hard. No, I had the same question. Thank mm -hmm. you. Okay, so that's that's good. Uh, Should Thomas, we continue with to... Sunday or? Yeah, sure. Sure. If yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, Sunday we had the uh, ITT in the individual time trial. We start with uh, one minute's uh, start interval. We start down in Caprun, and uh, it's the same course as last year. We go. Uh, it's a Long slide uphill. We have the first timing after 2.5 kilometers, and then we have the second timing at 6.3, where we pass the start from Saturday, and we finish up in Melago Alm after 10 kilometers. So, Thomas, so, you would say that everything's pretty much ready there. Then it sounds to me that you guys yeah. on top of things. Yeah, I can say that the organizers have done. A done a good work during the summer period. They, they have uh, this course for Sunday, they have winded up a little, so we get better conditions for the snow, even though this year the snow is not a problem, but uh, it's look, it looks really good. So as an event director, the first race is now, now behind you. What are kind of the uh, takeaways from the first one, the first weekend for you as an event director? Uh, and after that, we take Anders Blomqvist. Yeah, and I think uh, what happened last uh, weekend in, in uh, Badgerstein, we did the first event where we did the, the floor testing. It went out really good and we have uh, good um, uh, feedback also from the team regarding this. So this was positive and uh, we have uh, also uh, exciting podium, I think, in, in uh, Badgerstein on Sunday from the Badgerstein criterium. Good. And on this point, you have another question. Please go ahead. 
Same question. This seems to be the same track as last year. Is that right? Yes. Thank you. Good. Any other questions there for Thomas before we move on? So lastly, Thomas, before I let you go, what are you expecting from this uh, this weekend, both days? Personally? Yeah, I, I I will expect uh, on very beautiful TV pictures. We have it will have been it will be a lot of snow. Uh, it will be uh, I see we have new athletes on the line that showed up uh, last uh, week. So I will see a really exciting race for both Sunday and Saturday and Sunday. And I think Jakob, you how do you still have a question? Uh, yes. The timing was a bit of a problem on Saturday in Babgastein. Uh, are you safe that the timing will be will work well? Uh, have you secured that for this race? Yes, we have a ni another timing supplier for this event, and uh, we have very good experience from from this company. Thank you, thank Thanks. you very much, so, Thomas, and good good luck there. I think it'll be a great race uh, this weekend. Uh, you go and. Do your work now and, and make sure that everything works perfectly on sa Saturday and Sunday. Thank you very much for be being here. And we move on. And the next guest we have is Kasper Stados, Team Raktejats, the happy winner. Kasper, how are you doing? Are you there? I'm here. Good. Yes, I'm, uh, I'm doing well. I'm doing uh, good. <laughs> of course you are. You won the race. You had a really mm -hmm. nice sprint there. One more to go. You become a legend. I remember you told me that in Mallorca that you really want to be the legend. And uh, you want to get the ProXE skiing subscription correct. <laughs> that was your yeah. goal. I mean, uh, the, the legend status is uh, for sure important. But uh, the uh, ProXE skiing uh, free membership is uh, important too. So um, I think that would... Uh, it's a good goal and a uh, um, uh, big goal for me this year to to win, to be able to have five victories in the, in the belt. Well, Leandro is listening, so if you get that last the other one more, I think he will, you know, grant you that that wish. But any <laughs> other questions from the floor for the uh, happy winner, Casper Stados? We have more along. Yes, uh, hi Casper. Uh, you were really offensive in uh, last weekend's race. Was this or was it something that you came up with during the race? Uh, no, the plan was to to be uh, on the offensive uh, uh, on uh, on the race on on Sunday. Uh, watching the the last year's race, uh, it, you should be up up there in the top ten if you if you have a good uh, good day, and uh, that was the plan. But you never know, so I just try to be up there and 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 be well positioned all the time. And if if I ran out of power, that would be my problem and not the tactic. So, um, yeah, it worked out well. Do you think that the higher altitude, the even higher altitude now will affect the, the tactics for this weekend's competitions? Uh, altitude is always a factor, for sure. Some Somebody hands it, somebody don't. Uh, um, if it's going to be different from Sportskastein to Valve and I don't know. Maybe some of the athletes that felt a little bit heavy uh, with uh, like a short preparation time for Belgastein will be better now. Uh, coming weekend, so I think it, for sure there will be more guys feeling good uh, on on the weekend's race coming up. So um, yeah, I think uh, either, either way it's going to be a hard and fast race. We saw that last year, so either way it's going to be be a fast one. Great, thanks. And then we have Jakob Hord. Hi, Casper. Uh, you look very strong all the way. Uh, on Sunday in in Badgastein, and you look, I mean, pretty, pretty safe <laughs> almost uh, all the way to the to the finish. Was that your own feeling, or uh, how how was your feeling during the race on Sunday? Uh, well, you you can't be too sure in a in a field like that with so many strong skiers. Uh, so. Yeah, I've heard that people said I looked very strong, but uh, I I didn't feel that strong. Uh, you are always a little bit insecure. Uh, I know that the guys I'm competing against are very strong, and and I've lost a lot of races, so uh, I didn't feel very safe. So uh, 
Um, but I I just tried to play my cards uh, well, and uh, luckily it uh, turned out pretty good. Thanks. And then moving on, Anders Blunkvist, you have a question? Yes. Hi, Kasper. Hey. How has your body reacted after the race? Is it good or are you having <laughs> some thoughts? Uh, it's been okay. Uh, we uh, went back to Livigno after, after, straight out of the race. So um, we celebrated with some pizza uh, on the way back. So I've uh, been recovering and then yeah, trying to train pretty well this week as well as um, yes just because it's a, it's a long season so uh yeah try to balance recovery and and more training uh, so it's been pretty good thank you and then moving on maria valberry hey casper uh, sort of on the same track that anders uh, curious about the training at the moment looking ahead having some big races off the christmas uh, can you tell me a little bit more about the training this week and how heavy is the load at the moment, considering that it's waiting a bit of a break for competitions after this weekend? Uh, well, I I try to stick to the main plan to to have a big volume in in December. So uh, I try to train as much as I can at the moment. Uh, so um, I was actually a bit surprised I felt so good last weekend, and uh, uh, yeah, I'm. I'm hoping to feel good on 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 Saturday and Sunday, but uh, I'm also looking ahead to to big big races after Christmas as well. It's a long season, so uh, you can't uh, top out. Hopefully, t- not top out in in December. But in saying that, is it still long hours, like long sessions, or and uh, building muscles or sprints? Like, how do you balance that to sort of still have the power on the weekend? Well, try to put as much uh, training in uh, the beginning of the week, um, and then I mean, I've, the, the races are hard, so I don't feel that I need too much um, hard sessions in between. Uh, and then Anders Arplan is here, so we're gonna go down to to the gym afterwards and lift some lift some weights. He's very into lifting weights now that he's retired to to make his wife happy. So we're gonna go down <laughs> and and uh, do some bro bro gym. Perfect. Thanks, Casper. Look at him. Thanks. Thanks. All right, and um, one more before we let you go, Casper, and get ready for the weekend. Ingeborg Schebe, please go ahead. Hi, Casper. Um, I just noticed that you are doing really well in, like, after all of two races, but um, you're doing re- really well in all the different bib categories. Uh, which one? Which one are you going for? Are you going to make a choice? Are you going to sweep them all? <laughs> Uh, well, um, I got a bit greedy on the first uh, weekend. I think um, my main focus is to win races, so I'm actually not aiming for any of them. Uh, but uh, I'm going to show up every weekend and, and try my best. And then, uh, especially before Christmas and the first races, I'm going to have fun. And I'm going to, if I'm up there, I'm going to make uh, uh, Alfred uh, work for it on the green. And and I tried to help uh, Johan a little bit on the climb last year in, in Valvenosta. So if I'm if I'm there, I'm gonna make the other guys work for it. But uh, my main goal is to to win the the race in the end. So you're you're aiming for the yellow. <laughs> I will see. Um, I've tried to win that a couple of years now and and failed miserably, being fourth. So uh, I'm gonna take each race at a time. That's a boring answer, I know, but it's actually the truth. Okay, well, we'll be looking. Good. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ingeborg. Uh, thank you, Casper. Uh, uh, I, need, I need to let you go now. Um, but good luck. And uh, let's see if you can repeat the feat and win again this uh, this weekend. Good. Right, thank, thank you. you. I, will, I will try my best. All right. And we have Emilia Fleten there. How are you doing now? Are you also a happy winner there? <laughs> yeah, I'm doing fine, thank you. So the the breakaway that you have was that uh, sort of preordained, or did did you just feel so great and you decided to? I'm just gonna go all guns blazing. I had decided before I started that I would push hard uh, in the beginning because I knew that we had the wind in our back. So, and I wanted to like have a good position. Uh, 
So, but it was not my plan to to break away that early. Uh, I was a little bit unsure when I got a gap if I should go for it, but um, I did, and uh, yeah, it went went great. So this is your second victory. You won the Basel a bit, of course. What does it mean now? Do you do you feel that now you're ready to win more? Because it took you a long time to start winning. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, you can you get a new confidence uh, winning races and uh, starting the season off like I did on uh, Sunday it was um, it was amazing. So uh, yeah, of course you feel like you are able to win races. So that's that's the goal, um, of course. But I also know that it can. You have to have the uh, really good day and good skis, and you never know if you're gonna have that every weekend. So, but for sure, uh, my goal is to win more races. And now, questions from the floor, please go ahead, raise your hand. And we have Leandro Lutz. Hello, Emily. Hello. You won uh, Bad Gastein uh, Criterion, but is in second place in the Yellow Bib competition. Are you planning to start any Ski Classics Challengers events to have some additional points? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, luckily, we have the Shea uh later uh, this winter, so I'm sh for sure going to race that, uh, but we'll see if I'm going to do another Challenger before that. But uh, it's uh, since I have the shave us on, I'm not like stressing with the challengers, but uh, I need to have have a challenger before the season ends. Uh, it feels like that. Okay, thank you. Good luck. Thank you. And then, and this Blunkvist, please go ahead. You're next. Hey, Emilia. Hello. You looked really confident. This Sunday, also Saturday as well. Um, was that your feeling before the race and during the race? Uh, no, it wasn't. Uh, I I think you have to like be really confident if you actually start uh, the season feeling really confident because you doesn't know how your um, competitors are. Uh, but uh, so no, I wasn't that confident. Uh, Try to just be relaxed and do my thing. Uh, so yeah, but uh, for sure when I raced on, or I was a little bit unsure on Saturday, but Sunday, of course, I felt good. So my confidence kind of grew <laughs> uh, all, uh, through the race. Yeah. Okay. And, and also the confident in your technique looked really strong that you were so relaxed doing the double pooling. And I... As I saw it, it was a little bit improvement from last year. Is that your feeling as well, or what's your what's your thoughts about your technique? Yeah, I, I've been working a lot of uh, with my technique uh, together with Lena, so I try to like. And I think uh, that is a little bit change from last year. I think uh, when I see also technique videos of uh, of myself uh, from like this fall, I think I look more relaxed and more um, stronger uh, so uh, yeah and uh, on Sunday I, I kind of struggled with my neck uh, the days before so I'm just trying to like keep them down and not getting them up because then I this season started should have guessed which race you had the biggest opportunity to win I might say Venosta rather than Badgerstein anyway uh, do you agree uh, yes and no because uh I never succeed in Venosta. I think I've been fourth there twice. So, uh, um, yeah. So, but if you if you like uh, look apart from that, so yes, for sure. Uh, I think the track suits me really good in Venosta. Uh, but I haven't succeeded there yet. So yeah, we'll see. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And next in line we have Jakob Hort. Please go ahead. Hey, Amelia. How has your the feeling in your body been since the the weekend? And where are you now? And how does the preparation look now between races? Uh, now I'm in Livigno. Um, I was really tired on Monday. Uh, really, really tired. It was a long day and you, kind of long travel uh, after the race as well. 
but uh, now I'm just been relaxing and training uh, so it feels better it feels like I have got my energy back and yeah it feels good thank you and then finally Ingeborg your turn please go ahead yeah um hi Emilia hello um I was just wondering I was looking at the stats from from last weekend and it looks like you are way up there in all of the bib competitions now this is after two races but um are you are you aiming to sweep them all or what's your plan for the season uh i think i'm of course uh sprint is maybe the bib i haven't like thought so much about but uh, both the climb and the yellow is uh bibs i want to go for uh i think if you're up there fighting for the podium in the women's class you're also going to be able to to collect some points in the in the bibs so that's kind of natural uh so yes uh but i haven't had a bib uh, ever so uh we'll see if I, if i'm going to be able to do that uh, this year so i was then wondering um you mentioned it just briefly but um the sprint and the climb in yellow the cli and you're saying you're going for climb in yellow but um how difficult would it be to win the sprint at the same time as you go in for yellow is, is that even doable to combine those or do you have to be smarter in the longer races to um abstain from some of the sprint points i think it's absolutely doable uh because uh, like i said if you're like in the in the leader group in the women's class you're you're able to fix uh, to pick some points but uh, uh i will see it's it gonna depend on how how i feel and of course the races maybe like when we're racing in altitude it's you have to like think about it if you're gonna push really hard for the sprints uh, because of the results in the end um but uh, if there's a race when i feel good and I'm just gonna try to collect some points, and you because you also collect points for the team, so it's important for the uh, team competitions. So yeah. Okay, doke. Well, we'll be uh, excited to see how it goes. Thank you. And thank you, Amelia. We're mo moving on, and let's see if you can conjure up another breakaway <laughs> on Saturday. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very thank much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we have Max Novak there. Max, how are you doing right now? Recovering, correct? Yes, no, yeah. I just had a long session in the uh, morning here. So, uh, yeah, it was uh, really snowy and uh, slow. So, uh, yeah, but uh, the job is done. So, uh, now, uh, just two days left with uh, pretty easy training. Uh, after the race, you said that you weren't actually prepared to be on a podium. You didn't feel that it was possible. Do you, are you now more confident that you will be on a po uh, podium again? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I had uh, an exam last week and uh, had like studying for eight hours a day in front of that. So, uh, uh, and I felt really bad in training as well. So, uh, yeah, it was just one of those, uh, uh, yeah, weeks when. Uh, it gets better and better. So, uh, yeah, but uh, no, I didn't expect to be uh, that uh, high up in the results list. But uh, yeah, I hope with this week we're in Lavasia, uh, an attitude that I can be uh, stronger than last uh, last week because uh, I uh, I had some trouble in the uphills uh, last week and it was uh, went went for on the defensive in the race. Okay, that remains to be seen. But now questions from the floor. Please go ahead, raise your hand. Anders Plunkvist, you are first. Hey, Max. Yeah. Are your body adjusted to high altitude now, or are you still struggling a bit with it? Uh, my clock says I'm uh, adjusted to 1,200 meters uh, above sea level, but... Uh... I don't know. I, I I've never said I struggle with it, so uh, uh, I I really don't feel it like when I train. But, but 
I try to keep my cool during training and haven't done any hard sessions. Then Mott and Long, please go ahead. Yeah, hello, Max. Uh, you said when we talked uh, right after the race uh, that you had luck and you had uh, very good skis that saved you during the race. Was Is that still your impressions after thinking through what you did last Sunday? I, more than maybe I... Uh... I tried to race smart uh, for once and uh, yeah, just uh, used my energy where I had to and uh, I could uh, even like let go of the bunch in the uphills to awesome. just uh, yeah, uh, catch them again in the flats yeah. and uh, the one thing I was really confident in was uh, the flats because uh, uh, yeah, I, I've been feeling really good there. there and, uh, Yes, the one turn off there. I think someone might have a micro microphone on there because you can hear a background. Yeah, good. But uh, yeah, uh, it was really good in the flats, and that has been a a big uh, focus for me uh, during the summer training. So I was happy with that. <laughs> Any more questions from the floor? I can ask another one. How was the feeling in your body after last week's competition? Has it? Have you recovered and are you ready for the upcoming weekend? Yeah, I had a pretty long drive after the race. Uh, but uh, yeah, I went out on a little easy session on Monday and uh, it didn't feel too bad. I took it, uh, took it slow, but uh, yeah, I think I'm... Um, I'm getting in like better shape, so I can like uh, I don't have too long recovery time after the races. Uh, but I hope it gets better because I still felt like uh, the muscles were pretty, uh, yeah, strained. So otherwise, I felt okay. Great. And then, Thanks. then Jakob Hord, the stage is yours. Hey Max, uh, just wondering Hi. where you are now. Where did you go uh, after uh, Baden-Gastein? Yeah, we went to uh, Lava so uh, at 1800 meters. So uh, we're getting this uh, thin air in the lungs, and uh, hopefully uh, I'll be uh, even better prepared for the uh, stuff where the altitude is uh, is uh, one key factor. Thanks. Any more questions before we let uh, Max go? Well, I have one, Max, uh, for you, uh, tactic-wise. It's a different type of race, uh, even higher altitude, uh, and also really tough course. How would you approach it? What is your tactic, strategy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, last year was a bit surprising because... Uh, of course, this year I think the course is a little tougher, but uh, I thought there would be bigger differences last year because uh, uh, I was on the offensive almost all the race, and but it didn't lead to anything, even though I tried to push hard from the beginning of the uphills uh, a couple of times. Um, so for me, I hope that I can be uh, among the top contenders and... Uh, that uh, if I decide to like push in the uphills, that it leads to something more than uh, last year. But uh, yeah, I hope um, I was on the podium. So uh, I, uh, yeah, if I just feel good, I, uh, I hope I can uh, do something like that or even better. Okay, thank you very much, Max. Let's see how you how well you'll do. Are you you will do well, I think. Yep. Let's see if it's a podium again Thanks. for you. Thank you very much and go and, and get <laughs> some rest. Okay. Yeah, bye. Bye bye. And we are moving on to uh, Axel Jutteström from Team Echehus. Axel, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing good. Good, good. The race last weekend, you guys had a really, really tight fight there. What were you feeling? What were you thinking, or what were your feelings when you approached that last? Ready for a hard sprint, and uh, I got a little bit surprised by Casper, who went early and uh, yeah, didn't really have the same speed as the other guys. 
last 200 meters. Fifth, you know, which is really a great race, but do you feel a little bit of disappointed that you should have been up there on the podium? You were so close. Yeah, of course, you, when you're there and fighting for it, you want to be on the podium and you want to try to win. Uh, so <laughs> right after the finish line, you're, it's a bit of mixed emotions, but I pretty quickly uh, felt satisfied anyway. Good. And we also should have there someone else from you. Shohus, please, please uh, join us, Frida Erkes. Correct. Good. Now we have you as well together. Good. How are you doing? Good. Hello. I'm fine. <clears throat> good. Good. Uh, what about you? I mean, it's kind of the same question. You know, I mean, you were also so close fourth. I mean, great. Your best race ever. But still, maybe yes. a little bit disappointed. I could have been there. Could have been on the podium. Yes, it was uh, absolutely my best race ever. So it was really fun. But when you're so close to the podium, of course, you want to be there. <clears throat> Indeed, and we have a question from Jakob, Jakob Hård. Uh, starting with Axel then, uh, were you surprised that you were so well placed uh, in the race Sunday or is this something that you have felt that uh, you are uh, that good this season? Uh, no, I'm not surprised. I've been feeling good last month and uh, I felt that my uh, level should be pretty high, uh, and uh, yeah, it was it was nice to see that the feeling was, uh, yeah, was right. And what is the explanation for that the feeling that you've had? What have what have you done, and what have you improved? Uh, I think I had, uh, have had a. Uh, Good uh, training season. Uh, I've been uh, not been uh, sick almost anything, uh, and had uh, yeah a good summer and uh, autumn, and then uh, yeah I think in November has been r really good. We had uh, a long training camp in in Volodalen, and then I also got uh, competitions both in Jelvar and Idre that uh, felt like it was boosting. Uh, my shape up to up to now. Thank you. I, I'll ask the same question to Frida then when I s have the chance. Frida, were you surprised that you were able to be number four, or is this something you have been feeling coming this uh, autumn? Yes, as uh, as Axel say. Uh, I've also had a really good autumn and summer with the team, so of course I was hoping that I could have uh, been a little bit better than become a little bit better than the last year. But uh, I also try to push for the um, for the sprints. So when you do that in the altitude, you never know what happened. <laughs> uh, but I felt strong during the race, so that was really fun. And I also did quite good race in Yellowvare, so I knew that the, the shape was good, but that good, but that was a short race, and that's different with the longer race we are doing here. Back. And then Leandro Lutz, you're next. Please go ahead. Yes, uh, so ladies first, Frida. Uh, you had a solid fourth place at uh, last weekend at the Criterion. Uh, what have you learned from Badgerstein that you can bring to La Venosta and maybe get a podium there? <laughs> yes, uh, I. This is a different race there, and uh, it's a very, very tough uh, finish. But uh, I've learned a lot, and uh, I think that uh, it's uh, it's important to to go hard in the in the start if you want to follow the feed. Uh, but it's also high altitude, so you you need to be careful with that. <clears throat> and uh, in La Venosta, it can be also quite tough conditions, so it's a balance. Okay, perfect. And now, Axel, uh, last year you were 18th at uh, La Venosta Criterion, if I'm not wrong. What do you need to improve this year to get a better result there? Uh, I think I'm in a lot better shape uh... Uh, this year, then I was uh, the same time last year. So uh, 
I think uh, uh, I have uh, uh, good, better preparations to do a better result this year. Okay, thank you guys and good luck this weekend. Thank you. And then we have uh, Maria Valveri, please go ahead. Hey Frida, en fråga till Frida. Uh, about last weekend and also going into this season, um, what do you think that you have developed the most coming into this season with all the experience that you have in terms of technique and so in what parts do you feel stronger? And secondly, how much of confidence does it give you that you also got the sprint points in this first competition and are now up in the top three in that standing? Uh, first, <laughs> I can say something of what I have tried to improve and I have worked a lot with also with both my uh, uphill double pooling and high speed double pooling. Uh, so I hope that uh, that will show results during the races. Uh, and the next question, what was it? <laughs> Sorry. How much confidence? I mean, it's one thing to set a goal, but to, to show already in the first competitions that you're out there for the sprint uh, and, and getting those important points. How much confidence does that give for, for you coming weekend? Of course, it gives a lot of confidence. And it's also uh, really fun to see that, yes, it's not just the goal. And I can, be, I can be there. So, yes, I'm looking forward to the coming upcoming races. And fight for uh, even more sprint points. Thank you. Good luck. Uh, Thanks. Uh, and then we have Anders Blomqvist. Your question. Yes, I have questions both for uh, Axel and for Frida. Axel, first, uh, have you ever been better in the season than you have started this one? Uh, no, never been better this time uh, of the year. That, that I nice. can be quite sure of. Nice. One thing that at least I've been thinking a lot of before this season was how the skis are going to work without floor. Uh, and it was a little bit difficult to see watching the race through a TV camera. What was your opinion racing it? Was it a big difference between racers or what, what, was, your ex yeah, what was your impression? Uh, I don't know if it was a bigger difference than it's been before. Uh, felt Kind of like uh, it's been uh, previous years as well that it, uh, it differs. Uh, but uh, yeah, some teams have really good and some maybe not that good. And uh, a lot of people, uh, some teams in the middle. So I don't think there was bigger or smaller differences. Kind of the same, I think. Okay, thank you. Frida? Uh, the sprint was really impressive. I haven't seen that speed from you before. Was it uh, a surprise for you? I, we have trained for it a lot during the summer and the autumn. So, and uh, the other girls in the team, they are really strong. So <laughs> you need to keep up the level to, to follow them. So uh, yes, I've trained for it. Uh, who do you lend to regarding your training now you have been working with Matthias Nilsson a little bit before and now Matt is in the team who do you who do you lend to sorry what did you say uh, who, who do you think trains you now is who do you talk to do you uh, talking about training uh, if I do some changes no I was asking I, I think you have had Matthias Nilsson a little bit before when as a trainer and now Matt is in the team uh, has it been changes and who is training you now? Uh, yes, it has been some changes. It has, but um, I've, I've trained more like in blocks now. And uh, I've tried to improve the things I need to improve, like being better in the end of the races. And, and uh, as I say, uh, focus on my high speed double pooling. Uh, and it's really inspired to, to work with Marta. Thank you. And thank you very much, Axel and Frida. I know that you have the podium in your dreams now <laughs> for Saturday. So thank you for being here and good luck. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. And Thomas Bing, how are you doing? Alles gut. Hey, hey. <laughs> Wie geht es mit dir? Alles sehr gut, ja. That's, <laughs> that's my German. Uh, 
Hamilton looked really strong on the uphills there uh, in the race. And uh, do you feel that this could, I mean, the Venosta course could suit you well climbing up? I think it depends a little bit. When the climbing is uh, like running, when I can run it, then it feels very good. But when I have to double pull it, when it's not extremely steep, so I think there are the other ones are a little bit better or nearly on the same level. So my big goal was to, when it's steep enough and long enough to run this uphill, and I try to focus a lot of it in the training. So you would say you're really good at herringboning. That's what you do when you said, you know, running up. Yeah. Good. And we have a question from Leandro Lutz. Please go ahead. Hi, Thomas. Hi. You are, you are a strong traditional cross-country skier and have a lot of experience on individual races. Uh, can the La Venosta time trial be a possibility for you on Sunday? A podium place? Um, I tried to start here two years ago and at this time I just didn't have a pro team. So I was really uh, yeah, sad about it that I can't start. Normally I have to say I, ex I really hate individual starts. So in a normal World Cup season, I really like the mass starts and I really hate the individual starts. starts. But uh, the last four years, five years, I have to make maximum trainings or long trainings alone and also my intervals. And so I hope, I don't know it because it will be the first time an individual start against the other ones uh, in Ski Classics. So I hope my uh, feelings were better than in the World Cup here. But I'm really looking forward to this competition. And um, yeah, hopefully it will be maximum fun and maximum hard for me. Okay, thank you. Good luck. And then we have Jakob Horn. Please go ahead. Hi, Thomas. Jakob Horn from Swedish Television. Uh, you have been focusing quite a lot on traditional before. Uh, where, where is your focus this season? Is it more on ski classics or how does it look? Uh, I think it's nearly 100% by ski classics. So, um, yeah, the last, the last year was really hard for me. Every time change, try to this, try this. But this year, many, many things have changed in my life. So from uh, getting out of the customer officer's key team and now have to work 40, 45 hours a week. And uh, so many things are changed. And so I have to, I want only want to make this one what's what I'm have fun with, and that's more in the uh, ski classics and less in the in the World Cup. So does that mean I understand that many things have changed? That does that mean that you have also changed the way you train? Uh, if you have another focus this season, and in what way has it changed in that case? Um, yeah, the, the training. It's not that much changing. It's just uh, why I'm doing this. The last years it was, I have to do double pulling much more than the other ones because my uh, after my broken leg, I every time have problems with my leg and now I have to double pull. So this year I, by the decision to make ski classics, I didn't say I have to double pull. So I say uh, now I'm training double pulling, especially. And okay. so it is, this is have changed, but it's near. It's more in a, a private way. It's changing. So with the work now and to some children's trainings uh, too on top. And so many things new. But do you still feel that you can put in the training that you want to do, or do you do you have to train less than you would really like to? It's a, it's. A, I think I made enough training, but it's not that com uh, comfortable like the last years. So my week only have 160 hours around this at all. And when I have to make uh, 90 hours work, so the rest is sleeping and eating. So, <laughs> and it's not that comfortable like the last years, but I'm, I think I made enough training 
So when when it's cold, when it's uh, it's like I have to go outside at five o'clock in front of my work that I can be at eight o'clock at the work. So I have to do it. Okay, thank you. And thank you, Thomas. Uh, oh, okay, there's Anders Blomqvist. Do you still want to have a question? Please go ahead quickly. Yes, Thomas. Uh, how does it work in your new team? Are you? Is it a good team to be in? And what's what's the situation? I I think I absolutely choose the right team. It uh, feels more like a, a big family, less like a, a professional team. So, um, yeah. The last years it was like uh, going to a competition or go driving to a competition by 120 percent then make the skis testing make everything by your own uh, find the right hotel something like this and in the end on this on the starting line i will buy 80 percent and now it is like coming here the box get tested i only had to test my own skis and uh, the other ones are yeah like a big family and I just had to go on the start and take my best. Sounds good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you too. very. Thank you very much, uh, Thomas. And uh, would it be safe to say that you're aiming at the podium this weekend? Uh, safe to say, no. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I will try. I will try, like the other ones too. But yeah, I see it's there are nearly 15 men on the same level, so. Uh, it really have to, pe to depend on the day. Indeed. Thank you very much, Thomas. Good luck and be strong Thanks. this weekend. Bye bye. Bye bye. And hit the bongmang. Welcome. Thank you. Do you feel that you're ready for the weekend? You you yeah. gonna rock and roll and rumble? Yeah, I'm feeling very ready. I'm feeling good. And how was the uh, the race this the weekend? I mean, seventh place. Are you happy with it, or do you think that you can still improve? Yeah, I'm very happy with my race on yeah on both on Saturday and Sunday. Um, I felt very good, and it was a little I was a little unfortunate with the skis there that I lost it, but I'm very happy with the results. I mean, it's the best results that I have so far in ski classic. So, yeah. you said you lost your skis. You mean on your way? Yeah, or Pakistan. yeah, when I was no, 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 like during the race. Um, oh. Yeah. Oh, now I remember. Yes, you had a bit of a problem there. Yeah. Good. Uh, Venosta, La Venosta, do you think that the, the course suits you well? Yeah, I think it's good. I like the altitude and it's a nice course. It's it's very hilly, which which I like. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited. Indeed you are. And then questions. Anders Blomqvist, please go ahead. Hey, Heather. Hey. <laughs> uh, it was really an improvement of your form this weekend regarding uh, what you have done in Sweden earlier. Uh, do you have an explanation on that or was it a surprise for you that you were so strong? Um, yeah, or I was more like very disappointed after Yalavari because I had a better feeling before coming into those races and I thought I would do better than I did there. But uh, like uh, looking like, uh, yeah, now like afterwards when I ma made some reflections on that, I think I... Um, should have rested a little bit more uh, before those races. I was like not very well rested coming into those, those races. So, yeah, but I don't know. You know, it's hard. You never know with the body. Sometimes it goes very well and sometimes it does not. <laughs> yeah. But now the whole weekend you looked really, really strong. And even though you had this crash, you went back into the field pretty fast and looked, looked strong all the way. Um, is this top form or is it more to come from you later on this season? Uh, I mean, I haven't like uh, had like a training plan now that I should be like in my best shape. Um, I do want to perform like or do the best races at Vasalop, but so uh, I think I can uh, improve my performance even more. And I'm feeling good. I feel like I've had a very good uh, uh, summer and fall, and that I'm ready to to ski fast this season. Okay, looking forward to that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then Leandro Lutz, you have a question or questions maybe. Please go ahead. Hello, Heda. Hello. Hey. Uh, <laughs> you have changed teams this season. Have you changed anything regarding your training this, this summer? Um, 
Yes, I have changed the team. Uh, regarding the training, um, yeah, maybe actually I have, I think I have done like a little bit more like longer workouts compared to last year and being more consistent to have like uh, long workers, you know, those are, are like four or five hours. And then I would say like I have changed some like with the strength, uh, with my strength training too. Uh, I have done it a little bit, bit differently the, there, where, um, and I'm feeling like that I'm a little stronger this year. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Leandro, and then Jakob Hord, you are next. Please go ahead. Hey, Hada, I also have a question that concerns your new team. I understood uh, that you have not been able to, to join them for camps. Uh, now that you have spent a weekend uh, and all in in competition for your new team what uh, is your reflections uh it's very good yeah it was very nice to see them last week and get to know all of my teammates and the uh, staff and everyone and it feels very good so so far it's a little a bit smaller compared to the french team i was on last year and i think it's 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 very nice to have sandra on the team because she is a strong skier and it was so much fun to do the pro team tempo on Saturday where we could yeah, work together. And I think we did um, did great there and had like a very good performance. So I'm excited for, for this season with the, the, the team. Thank you. Thank you. And then, then we have uh, Maria Valberi. Please go ahead. Hi, Heather. Uh, looking ahead of the weekend, what's your expectations and goals going into this uh, double competition weekend with very two different races? The longer ones first and then the individual on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I said like before going into this season, I wanted to be top six and I was very close to reach that uh, on Sunday. So I think now maybe I should like... Um, Set higher goals now so i don't know it's hard to tell i want to focus on my performance and like uh, ski as fast as i can and focus on my technique and hopefully i can be top six uh, i was very close last weekend I, so so that's a goal and maybe i can hit the podium too if everything goes very well <laughs> is there any particular part of your technique that you're keen on that has to be 100 percent any focus points uh, mm -hmm. to get it most efficient yeah, that's a good question. Um, I'm trying, like, when I'm racing, to like really stay in the moment, you know, and adjust the technique to the terrain and, like, you know, in the uphills, like, uh, come up like high and uh, go come closer with your poles to your upper body, and then when it goes like easier, like, really try to ski it or to be like um, to really gain the gain the strength and get all the power through the poles and. Yeah, so like it's. I think it's for me. It's more to like really stay in the moment and not like think too much to uh, think think too much uh, too much about other stuff. Because sometimes I think it's a little bit hard to keep the focus, you know, throughout the whole race. Thank you, Hedda. Good luck. Thank you. And uh, thank you very much, Hedda. And uh, indeed, good luck. Luck to you. And before I let you go, pretty quickly, how do you like mm -hmm. these double headers? How do you like these races back to back during one weekend? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's hard, it's hard, but I like it. Um, I'm a little nervous about the, um, the end of the season where we have like two very tough races up in, in the north of Norway and then doing the 100k that might be like the hardest one of the whole season. Uh, so that makes me a little, I don't know, a little nervous and a little worried, but I think it's going to be great. Uh, but it's hard doing back-to-back -back races, especially when it's like two, when it's like two long distance races. Um, Indeed, very taxing for you guys, very hard. But thank you very much. Good luck and do well this weekend. Thank you. Thank you. And Yeri Arling, please come in. Team director of Team Engong. Hello. Hello, there you are. Once we get to see you. Hello. Hello, do you have your camera off? Because I can't see you. But I can hear you, but I can't see you. Hello. Can you hear me? I can hear you well, Yerri, but I can't see you. Can you hear me?
Well, let's wait. I think he needs to log out and log on again. This happens sometimes when we're on Teams. Modern technology should be um, foolproof, but sometimes it isn't. Let's hope that uh, Yerry will be back. I think he is now. Hello, yeah. Hello, can you? Uh, we can hear you, Yerry. Her- yes, good. It's good. some problem with the, with the internet connection. Okay, we can hear you. Uh, do you have your camera off? At least I can see you. Can you see? Uh, yeah, but I it's can. on actually for me. But okay. Can you see me well, now or not? The camera is on my computer. Mm-hmm. Okay, I don't see you. It's just a white screen. But uh, let's go, move on. Uh, and actually, kind of the same question that I had for for head dies, the double headers, and as a team coach, as a team uh, director former skier as well a legend i would say how do you feel how do you how do you think that the athletes feel about racing back to back i mean this is what they train for absolutely they they train hard and they they like to compete so uh, that's perfect with with a lot of a lot of races and and uh, they have trained train uh, hard every day and and the goal is to to ski fast in all races do you think it would have been nice to have these type of races when you were racing? Absolutely, I think it's it's cool to have uh, more races. I, I think also we could have uh, like a mini tour with with more races than two also in the future, just to develop the the long distance skiing. And I really like the the double races. And then uh, quickly, what about the last week? And are you happy with your results? And of course, Ida. Didn't win, second kind of expected to win, but overall, not just her, but your team. Yeah, totally. We had a really good Saturday and the Sunday was not so good that we have expected, but uh, totally we are, we are happy. But uh, I think we can do it better this weekend and I hope we can do it also. Indeed. And then questions from the floor. Please go ahead and raise your hand. Morten Long, please go ahead. Hello, Jerry. Uh, high altitude uh, this uh, weekend. How do you think that will affect the tactics from the skiers or you as a team? Yeah, I, I didn't hear the first. Uh, uh, it will be even higher altitude this this yes. weekend. Uh, how do you think that will affect the, the tactics from the skiers and for you as a team? Yeah, but they they are well prepared and have stayed in, in Livigno for uh, soon three weeks total in, in high altitude, so I think it's perfect with with the, the races here in in Milago. So no no differences. You don't have to consider that you when you make up your the plans for the weekend. Yeah, I think uh, maybe the one one problem for us is that we have a lot of new skiers from from Norway, good skiers, and and in the first race it was standing in the like. The last one in the in the field, so that was uh, a problem to to like skiing and pass all the skiers, and and so that's a little bit of problem for us. But uh, hopefully we have a we have a better uh, better uh, weekend this weekend. Uh, we're not totally uh, what can I say? Uh, I I think we can go faster this weekend. Great, thanks. Good luck. Thanks. And then Jakob Hord, you're next. Hey, Jerry. Now that uh, a few days have passed, uh, what? how do you evaluate uh, your skis on s- Sunday? Uh, on Saturday, we had really, really good skis. And uh, we did a mistake on Sunday. And, and uh, that was not so good. But we have learned from that. And, and hopefully, we have uh, really good skis this weekend. I'm not... Uh, so uh, afraid of having good, uh, bad skis this weekend, but it was not not uh, super skis on Sunday. The the new situation with no floor. Uh, how do you feel that that affects you and and all other teams? Is it more difficult to find the right skis now, or do you feel uh, pretty confident anyway, or is it a whole new situation? Yeah, first I was a little bit afraid of, of the, the floor situation and the, the machine and everything, but now I feel very, uh, very safe on that one. But 
but uh, I think, uh, of course, there is new new vaccine stuff we must try and, and like that. But but uh, I think we we have found a lot of good good things. So uh, I think to the weekend we can do do good races. Thank. Indeed, slowly but surely we'll get used to the uh, the new methods and new waxing and so forth. But Anders Blomqvist, you're next. Please go ahead. Hey, Ari. Hey, hey. Uh, <laughs> your team uh, efforts on Saturday was really impressive, and I was talking to some guys in your team, and they thought maybe some of maybe especially the Norwegian guys were a little bit overloaded before the race on Saturday. They wanted to show so much. And then the results on Sunday wasn't that impressive. Uh, is the whole team coming to Venosta? And what's your situation in your team, especially those uh, Norwegian guys? Yeah, they are they are all in good shape, and and I'm not. Uh, uh, I I think they will will ski fast this week. And we had some problem with Uli Örgen had uh, problem with his stomach during the race, and he hadn't uh, eaten breakfast and. So we had a problem with that, and uh, yeah, but I feel pretty sure that we can we can do it much better this weekend. Um, do you know the start situation for them for the coming up weekend? Has it improved a lot, or is it still way back in the pack? I think they are way back in the pack, actually, but uh, I don't know if they... If they can uh, move them forward to in the field, but I hopefully they do. Because uh, it's some problem for the for the sprint the guys to to come from from the back of the field and and after four kilometer and pass all the skiers and and try to to get the, the green bib. Yeah, for sure. Is that the discussion that you have with with the ski classics organization now, or is it how is the situation there? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I have I have heard some uh, try to find out some some answer about that, but I think they are. Working on it. Okay, thank you. And then we have Ingeborg Schebe. Your turn. Yeah, hello. Um, I had questions about the um, Norwegian guys as well. Um, first of all, you mentioned that Ole Jorgen didn't eat breakfast. Why, why didn't he eat breakfast? No, nah, he had a problem with his stomach, so. Oh, stomach. Okay, I yeah. thought you said he had problems with his thumb. No, and no, I no, wonder no, no. how that would affect his breakfast. But that yeah. explains it. Um, so you have three new Norwegian guys. Uh, they all come from traditional skiing. Uh, what, what, how, how do you transition them into this game? How, how they are trying or, or... No, how are you transitioning them into this, this new... First, I mean, like it's a team environment. It's a it's a whole different way of racing. Yeah. Yeah, but we have, of course, uh, changes the training. They have uh, double pull a lot more than they have done before, and they have uh, longer sessions. And, and uh, they have also, of course, tried to to develop the the skiing together with the team. So we have a lot of uh, yeah, like Ida and and. Uh, good people on the team and, and uh, they have done really good training this summer. So I think they will have good results uh, this winter. So, so do you see any, um, is there, is there any value that you can, that they can bring to the team or do you have to just teach them everything and then they swim? Um, or are they bringing another dim dimension to the team as well? Yes, absolutely. They they are uh, really good skiers, and and in Norway they have they are they are really good in in traditional skiing. So of course they have good capacity and and stuff like that. And some of them are really, really, really fast. So uh, of course they they have help also the the other on the team. So what what position what what is the role that you are? seeing for them on the team like which which positions will they fill nah but i think all oh, man is is going for the green bib uh in in the in the beginning here and and then we have uli Örgen and and johan was really good skiers and i think they have uh, 
uh, really good uh, uh, chances to to be on the top or in the podium or in the top places. So so I feel confidence with that. Okay, thanks. And then we have Jakob Hord again. Please go ahead. How is the situation with Ida after the weekend and uh, looking forward to what's coming up? Yeah, Ida feels uh, really good. So so she's looking forward to the to the races here. And I think also the track will fit her very well then. I think she, she is going to ski faster than she did on, on uh, Sunday. And uh, hopefully she can be in the top of the, of the podium. Back. And then Maria Valberg, please go ahead, your turn. Hey, Jerry. Uh, just a question about the women's side. Uh, to have a full team with women, with Tove, Hanna and Ida, what do you say about the opportunities for them to race and put in more team tactics on the women's side? Uh, it's that feels really fun and, and good to have uh, three good skiers on the team. And, Hopefully they can they can help each other on the on the track uh, during the winter and uh, I think they can ski really fast uh, from from this weekend and forward. So hopefully you can do some some tacticals, uh, a good tactic, to, yeah, races also for the girls. And looking at Hanna and Tove, is there anything you can say about where you think they have developed? Tove now focusing. The whole season and Hanna with the experience. Uh, if you should say something about what they've developed, I think they are faster and uh, they are trained a lot more double pooling. And uh, I think they are much stronger this season than the last one. So uh, I feel pretty pretty sure that they can they will ski fast also this year. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. We're pretty much out of time. But yet one thing you mentioned earlier when we started out that uh, Saturday went well, but Sunday didn't. And you can improve. You can do better. What does it mean exactly? Meaning better. Yeah, 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 what, yeah, do, what do you want from this weekend? Yeah, I want that the skiers can show what they can. And, and uh, of course, this, this ski must be good if you will win races. But uh, we had really good skis Saturday, and then we maybe tried too much on, on the Sunday race and missed a little bit there. But I feel pretty sure that, that the skis will, uh, will be good, really good this weekend. We'll try and LA test it now in, in Milago for the whole week here now, and then we are testing uh, tonight and tomorrow, and, and then we, we try to get the, the best skis on the field. Uh, during the weekend. So Ida being the superstar in your team, you confident now that she can or could win this uh, weekend? Yeah, I feel pretty sure that she is uh, she is in the good shape and she can win races. All right, thank you very much, Jerry. Good luck with you and your team, and let's hope that all will turn out well and you have good skis for the weekend. Thanks for that. And thank you all. Thank you all the guests, all the media rep, the reps there joining us, all the people watching this live. And let's all get ready for the weekend. La Benosta Criterium on Saturday and individual time trial on Sunday. What a weekend once again. I know and I'm pretty sure I know it'll be a great weekend as always. Take care. Enjoy the week and see you this weekend. Bye bye.